welcoming Dr. Monica Posey, President of Cincinnati State Technical and Community College, and Chancellor Mike Duffy of the Ohio Department of Higher Education. Um, so I want to start with maybe not your favorite data point, but one I think you'll be able to refute. The share of Americans who say college is, quote, very important has been really plummeting in the last 15 years, according to Gallup's latest polling. So 75% of Americans said college is very important in 2010, and now it's 35%. You're two prominent leaders in higher education. You see this debate play out all the time. Is higher education worth it? So my question to you, is it? <laughs> We're seeing the data that indicates it is truly important and makes a difference. At Cincinnati State, we received data from the Ohio Department of Higher Ed that said that graduates earned $20,000 more than those who are in our area on the average with um, high school degrees only. So that's a significant difference in the dollars that they make, their ability to plan and support their families. In addition, personally, I'm first generation. I went to public schools. My bachelor's and master's led me to being a project manager at a corporate uh, 500 corporation and then later on switching to a doctorate to president of a college. So it made a difference for me, but we see it all the time with our students. Well, Dr. Posey's right, and of course, you know, 62% of the U.S. population attempts a college degree and only 38% have a baccalaureate. Mm -hmm. And so when you see the data and you know that one third of college students ultimately drop out, it's easy to understand the frustration. But the reality is that for those who actually complete a college degree, the return on investment is very strong. And the labor market data is very clear on that. And I want to be very clear about this because a lot of people are kind of confused. They say, well, it's changing. And although there is frustration about the cost of college and all these things, the reality is that the value has never been better than it is today. Mm -hmm. The Federal Reserve Bank of New York measures the value of a baccalaureate over a high school diploma. And they've been measuring it since 1990, so 35 years now. And it used to be $15,000 adjusted for inflation and current $2024, and now it's $20,000. So the gap between a high school diploma and a college education is actually widening, and it's becoming more important than ever. One of the key parts of this frustration that you pointed out is that parents and, and students feel like college isn't going to prepare them for the jobs of the future because they keep reading headlines. And I'm guilty of writing this headline that the work is changing faster than the curriculum is. What do you, I mean, you've got a front row seat to these student anxieties. What do you hear from them? I'll start with you, Dr. Posey. Um, and, you know, what, what do you tell them to, to make them feel better as they're navigating, you know, the next, this next phase of life? Students do worry about um, selecting the right major, having a program that will lead to employment. So we provide plenty of career support right at the beginning when they start college make sure they understand the careers and the opportunities. We continually work with employers to make sure we are offering the right programs. In community colleges, you'll find that our curriculum is more flexible. We can change, add, um, expand programs much quicker. And then the parents are usually concerned about the price, the cost, being able to pay for college, not have a lot of debt on completion. And so we make sure that our tuition is very low. So you have a combination of supporting the students, but then also helping the parents understand the value of the education. And Chancellor Duffy, same question, but you're, from your vantage point, two and four year institutions. Yeah, I mean, it's really about value. Mm -hmm. And value is about cost, and it's also about the return on that investment, so the wages. We definitely hear students talking about the STEM disciplines. Mm -hmm. We hear them talking about business, and we hear them talking about advanced manufacturing. And there's two things that you're really looking for and that I think people talk about, high wages and high growth. Mm -hmm. And when you're in this space, the GE Aerospace is in right now, it is both. And so that's what's really beautiful about this in Ohio in this moment that we have. We're a very strong manufacturing estate. We're within a single day drive of 60% of the US population. 
We have a very favorable tax climate because we don't have a corporate franchise tax. We have a commercial activities tax that's low and broad. So this produces a very pro-manufacturing state, which we've always been since the 1800s. You already kind of started this, but let's get into some solutions. There's great jobs here in the Cincinnati region and across Ohio. Ohio, ooh, Ohio, oh. probably the easiest state to say, and I stumbled over it. <laughs> um, and another illuminating data point we have is that we know that Gen Z is much more interested in working in the trades than their millennial counterparts were. And their parents are much more open to it, too, because they've started to see, OK, there's real money here. There's real opportunity here. The my kid must go to a four-year college thing, or, or you know, four-year college and then an office job isn't really a thing anymore. So, what sorts of programs and partnerships are you seeing, Chancellor Duffy, across Ohio? Work-based yeah. learning, and particularly Southwest Ohio, is kind of the leader in our state. I would say historically, mm -hmm. both Cincinnati State and the University of Cincinnati have strong co-op programs which are more deep relationship than an ordinary just summer internship. It's an entire semester. It might be Is this like an apprenticeship multiple semesters. Or? Yes, but it's yeah. work-based learning where you're earning credit and it's during the actual semester. And so actually, University of Cincinnati started cooperative education in the United States in 1906, Herman Schneider. And so it is just really in the DNA in Southwest Ohio. Miami University, which is also in Southwest Ohio, has the Work Plus program, and I think if you think about higher education, in 1940, less than 5% of the US population had a baccalaureate. Now, as I said, it's close to 40%, it's 38%. Those students are not the same students that existed before. Those students today want the American dream, and they're looking for wage mobility and economic outcomes. And that workforce connection of having an internship or a co-op really produces that stickiness and that value for the, for the employer as well. I would just add, for Cincinnati State, we do have a large co-op program, and the idea is the students are alternating between school and the work assignment. It's paid work assignment, so it helps them pay for their uh, college education. Our coordinators make sure that the work is tied directly to their field of study. So they're advancing, but they're also connecting the employers to the college. I'll also add that we and the other community colleges in Ohio focus on pathways. So if a student, for example, is studying a trade at a high school program, at a career tech school, some of that credit might transfer into Cincinnati State. We do have short-term certificates. We have longer terms, like a one-year, a practical nursing as a one-year. But then we have our associate degrees, and then we also have a strong transfer module and transfer partnerships for our bachelors and we offer some applied bachelors so the key is that we have pathways to the future a student can start in one place get a job continue part-time or they can continue straight through yeah i was going to ask that so do these opportunities often turn into jobs after graduation for students well many of our co-op students do find jobs with their employers. One of our great partners is GE. So we have hundreds of Cincinnati State graduates who started as co-ops who are now full-time at GE. And it gives the employers a chance to do a long interview, a long assessment of the individual and offer employment. But those who don't go to their co-op employers have a strong resume of hands-on experience. The two buzzwords when we talk about manufacturing and advanced manufacturing, the new workforce are reskilling and upskilling. Mm -hmm. And you know, those words kind of make everyone's eyes glaze over because we hear them all the time. But what they mean really is that the student might not look like an 18 year old anymore. Right. There might be older learners. How are Ohio institutions, and you can speak to Cincinnati State in particular, integrating older learners into the curriculum, into classrooms so that they can you know, learn the new thing and then get back on the job? Our average student age is about 25, so we have just as many from high school as mature adults coming back to college. Some are trying to advance in their current positions. Some are starting completely new careers. But they're in the classes together, and they learn from each other. It's a very positive experience. And we have the supports for all types. We have a child care center. If they have children, we have um, a food pantry, but then we also have all kinds of advising and um, mental health services, so we support all ages. 
And if you think about it, higher education has switched from an all or nothing, mm -hmm. really get a degree, to now pieces that stack together for a complete education. And you're never really done. It is going to become lifelong learning. Mm -hmm. It's going to be required in the future that even people with a baccalaureate degree come back and get a certificate of some mm -hmm. kind. And the federal government and state government is supporting this now with programs like TechCred, IMAP, Workforce Pell, and et cetera. So it's very much going that direction. If you could wave a wand, Chancellor Duffy, and have every state do one thing the way Ohio does when it comes to higher education, what would that be? Well, I don't want every state to do what we do because <laughs> I want to have a unique and unfair advantage, the kind of unfair advantage that uh, GE Aerospace has with its market share and through CFM with the RISE program. I think that these things are really important is to build on the strengths that we have. So we have a unique location. Other states can't copy that. We have a unique tax climate. Other states can try to copy it, but it's very difficult to do. We have access to fresh water. Other states can't compete with that. We have a low cost of living, which makes it a really desirable place to employ. So I don't want them to do that, but we have something in our DNA and our history, which is aviation and aerospace, the Wright brothers, the birthplace of aviation. We are a manufacturing state, as I talked about. These are core strengths, and they're kind of in our DNA, and I think they give us a competitive advantage. So. Other states should do that, but I don't want them to. <laughs> and how about you, Dr. Posey? What's one program happening at Cincinnati State that every community college should do, but you don't want them to do it? <laughs> we have a very large College Credit Plus program, which is the high school dual enrollment. It's very successful, and we've had a tremendous support from the state to facilitate the process to bring more students in. That means they're completing, in many cases, their high school diploma and completing an associate degree. They're saving their families money, but they're getting that college experience and they have a pathway to success early on. Some states do that, but I think Ohio does it best. <laughs> So I'm actually coming to you today from Ann Arbor, Michigan. I know that's not as controversial here as it is in Columbus, yeah. but I have gotten to see, you know, I have a nice view of a great college town with great college traditions. What is your favorite Ohio college tradition that's gonna blow Michigan out of the water? <laughs> I think um, just the people and the energy and how we come together um, whether it's in sports or special events or whatever, people in Ohio just have the energy to cheer on. Uh, I'll let the chancellor say something more specific. I like three things. <laughs> Mascot races with students, I think yeah. those are amazing. Graduation traditions like throwing your cap in the air or, or jumping yeah. into a lake or whatever it is. And then the superstitions that if you, if you kiss somebody under this arch, you're gonna get married or if you step on this, <laughs> you're gonna fail your first exam. <laughs> Perfect, thank you both so much for your thank time you. and thank you for being with Axios. All right, thank you.